Hello everyone! Today we are going to learn one of my most favorite and most important topic of business studies. Yes, it is from the second chapter of Principles of Management and I'm really sure you would also enjoy to learn this topic really well. Okay, so we're going to study today the 14 principles of management provided by Henry Fayol. Now, all of you must be knowing who is Henry Fayol. He is a most important management thinker, a person who's provided all business organization with certain principles which is very important for every business organization to follow. Yes, now let's take a, uh, let's take a look at what I have written. Uh, probably it's a little mushy for you to understand, but please ensure that you're taking notes meanwhile when I'm going to teach you. Yes? Thank you. So, let's start off. There are two important management thinkers. The first person is Henry Fayol and the second person is Frederick Winslow Taylor. It's a, he's also called as F.W. Taylor, like all of you know. Now the introduction, like in your exams, in your final exams, there will be an important question which is coming stating that explain the 14 principles provided by Henry Fayol or he is also called the father of general management. So please ensure that you study this answer really well and there's a small knack where I will teach you how to remember this particular answer. Yes, so let's move in without wasting any more time. Now, the introduction, what you're going to write in for a two marker, a two marker introduction. I have told you every eight mark answer, every eight marker should have an introduction, should also have a conclusion. So in the introduction to 14 principles of management provided by, yes, Henry Fayol, you will write the introduction of who Henry Fayol is. Yes, so Henry Fayol was reigning from the year 1841 to 1925. So we are not going to concentrate when he was born or when he died, when he wrote a book in which year it was published in English, all that we are not going to concentrate on. But you will learn from which year to which year was he reigning or he was active in his period. So in the year 1841 to 1925, he was active or he was dead. Now the second point is he is called as the father of general management. This again, they will ask you for a definite one marker in your paper. They will ask you who is the father of general management. You should know Henry Fiol is the father of general management. Yes. So he did his engineering and he joined a mining company and uh, the mining company since it was a French mining company and later he worked there as a manager where he started understanding what are the problems that was faced by several employees there and then he wrote a book which was which is named as general and industrial management. So in case if they ask you the name of the book, you should know. But basically they'll ask you this, who is the father of general management? You should know that it is Henry Fayol. Please study the spelling as well properly. Now, what are the 14 principles provided by Henry Fayol? To make it much more simpler for you, I have written it here in red. I don't know if you can actually see it properly. I've written it here. Today, we will not be studying. Uh, today, what I would teach you is, these are the principles I have written here on the whiteboard. So, it's written as D square, U square, E square and S cube. Okay, so when you are studying also, the short form is D square, U square, E square and S cube. So, that is how you'll be studying. So, if it is for an 8 marker, the board will ask you to write the 14 principles. So, easy method, you can remember D square means two points start with D. U square means two points start with U. E square two points start with E. And S cube three points start with S. And they are very very important. Understood? So the first uh, principle provided by Henry Fayol, our management thinker, is division of work. What is it? Division of work. The word itself is telling you division. That means the work should be divided. What is it? The work should be divided. What does he say? Any work in an organization 
can be divided into small jobs. So what have I done? I have taken a work. So this is the work. Let's say you're working in a finance organization or let's say it's a finance department. Okay. So there's so much of work that's happening in a finance department. So that finance work, how are you going to divide it into small jobs? Now you will divide it into different teams first. Let's say accounts receivable team, accounts payable team, general ledger team, call monitoring team. So all you will divide it into different departments or teams and every job, every small job is done by a specialist. Who is it done by? It is done by a specialist. Now who is this person called as specialist? A specialist is a person who is trained, who has lot of knowledge and experience in whatever job he is doing or performing. So what is Henry Fiore telling us? So that's the reason I have drawn a small diagram so that it's easy for your explanation. So what is he saying? Any work you take can be divided, like how we are dividing an apple, can be divided into small parts. And every small part, that's it's divided into small job. Every small job is provided, is given to a specialist who has a lot of knowledge, caliber and experience in doing that kind of job. If you do this or if you follow this in any organization, this improves the quality and the production of your uh, company. Understood? So mainly you should know what is the meaning of the point and what does it improve or what is happening if you follow the certain principle. So if you follow division of work, what is happening? It increases the quality and the production of your company. Understood? Shall I move on to the second one? Now the second one is discipline. Please learn the meaning of the word discipline. Discipline means obedience. See, I have double underlined it. Please ensure you are also underlining it or you are writing it down somewhere. Discipline means obedience. What are they saying? Any organization, let it be a small organization, a big organization, should, all the employees should be obedient to whatever uh, the organization is asking them to do. Let it be any rules and regulations that have to be followed in an organization. The employees should follow those rules and regulations and they should have good relationship with everyone working around them. Example, they should have good relationship with their team members and their manager. So that is what is called as discipline. Discipline means obedience. See here. So obedience to the organization goals. So every employee should follow in achieving the organization goals. And one should have good relationship with others, like I've told you. So what will happen if you follow discipline? That is if you are obedient, listening to what your manager is saying, doing your job what you're supposed to do. This improves the quality and the quantity of production. Just like the first point here, improves the quality and the quantity of production. Understood? So the second point, discipline also has increases quality and quantity of production. So the knack is you need to know the meaning of the terminology along with you need to know what is increasing in the company. If you do not follow it, what is decreasing or what will happen to the organization? That's the knack in your explanation. Okay, now moving on to the third point, unity of command. Again, I'll repeat, unity. Unity means what? Everybody should work together. So, unity of command. Command means what? I am commanding you to study your subject every day. Or let's say, I am commanding you to do one particular job. So, what will you do it? You will ensure to do it. Now, who is going to command you in an organization? Definitely, your manager or your team leader is going to tell you, Yes, you, uh, let's say Ravi, this is a job that is assigned to you, please do it. Okay, so what is unity of command? They say every individual employee should have only one boss. Again, I'll say, if example, this is an employee, every individual employee should have only one boss. If an individual employee serves two bosses, that means if he is having two managers who he has to report to and who he has to tell, this is the work I've done, this is what I've done, or the managers are telling him what to do. What will happen? The employee will get confused and the employee will start escaping from whatever job he is assigned to do. 
Example, I'll tell you. Let's say you are an employee who's joined a company and you have two bosses. The name of your bosses, let's say, is Suresh and another boss's name is, let's say, um, okay, uh, Rosario. So what happens? The, Rosario is telling you to do one job. But Suresh is telling you, no, 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 you have to do the other job. Now, who would you listen to? Would you listen to Suresh or would you listen to Rosario? Now, the employee, you being the employee, you are definitely going to get confused. What is your job to do? So, what you will do, you will start escaping from doing your job because you're not interested to serve two people. So, that is what is called as unity of command. Every employee should only have one boss. This is every individual employee. We are talking about one person. So every individual employee should have only one boss. If in case you are serving two bosses, you're listening to two bosses, two managers, bosses refers to managers. If you're listening to two ma bosses or two managers, what will happen? It leads to confusion, confusion of employees and both the managers would get confused by what you're saying and it will lead to escapism of work. And it creates a lot of irresponsibility for you as well as for the managers. Yes. Now moving on to the fourth point. Unity of direction. Please underline and make notes as I'm teaching you so that it's easy for you to refer it later on. Unity of direction. Now previous to that we learned that every employee, single employee should only serve one boss. But now we are speaking as a team. Every group of employee, all like let's say a particular group of employee should be led by only one leader. Now let's say you are put into a team of 10. Again I'll repeat, you are put into a team of 10. Now you become a team, okay? Now every team is only having one manager. So this one manager is handling the particular team of employees. Yes? So, if there are two managers for a particular team, what happens? Again, it leads to what? Wastage of resources and increases the cost and leads to unhealthy competition. How are you wasting resources? Two managers are here, two, one team is here. Okay, so you are the team, you have 10 people with you. So, two managers are there. One manager is telling you do this work. So you are doing. Another manager is telling you, who asked you to do that work? I want you to do this work. So what is happening? Wastage of resources. Along with wastage of resources, time, efficiency, everything is getting wasted. Yes, and it leads to unhealthy competition among, among both the managers and among the team members also. So what is the meaning of unity of direction? Each group, each group means every team should be led by only one manager or one boss. Yes, so let's see. Each group, that is every team should be led by only one leader, one manager. It will lead to unity of action. So if there is only one manager, this will lead to coordination. Coordination means what? Integration, good unity among the team members and the manager. So if you have two managers, okay, what will happen? It leads to wastage of resources and increase in cost and unhealthy competition among the team members and the both managers. Yes, understood? Now moving on to the next point. So we are done with, let's kick off as we have completed. We have finished D square, we have finished U square. Okay, so what's the first one? Division of work, discipline, unity of command, unity of direction. Now moving on to the fifth one, equity. Equity means what? Equity means what? The manager should be kind and just. Okay? Equity simply means equal. Okay? Let me write it down. Equity means equal. Please make a note. Equity means equal. That means what? The manager cannot discriminate or he cannot put you down based on your caste, based on your religion, based on your sex based on whatever other discrimination is there. He has to treat all the employees equal in a team. Just because the manager, let me give you an example. Just because your manager, let's say he is a telegate, he cannot be partial to only the team members. Let's say in a team of 10, there are two people who are telegates and your manager is a telegate. He can 
not always prefer speaking only to the people in Telugu language. He has to address them in the basic language or in the common language called English, which everybody understands. Yes? So what is it? He has to be equal to all the employees. He cannot discriminate them based on saying, Oh, you are a Christian. You are a Hindu. I am a Hindu. I will only prefer Hindus. I cannot prefer you as a Christian. I cannot prefer a Muslim. So what is it? It's discriminating. So what is Henry Fion teaching us? Every manager should treat all the employees equal. They cannot discriminate them based on caste, creed, religion and sex. Yes? Now, what is it? Managers should be kind, just and treat employees equally. No discrimination should be done based on religion, caste, sex and creed. Yes? Now, moving on to the next Point. Esprit D Corp. How do you pronounce it? It's called Esprit D Corp. What does it mean? It means spirit of cooperation. I repeat again. Esprit D Corp means spirit of cooperation. The word cooperation itself tells you that all the team members along with the manager should work together as one. They cannot be divided. They have to stand together as a team. Even if one person makes a mistake, everybody should say, yes, I take responsibility because we are working here as a team. So in all the conversations of the manager, the manager should address the employees as we. So everywhere, the word I will get replaced with the word called we. I cannot say I am the manager of your team, I will do this, I will do that. It should not be done. You, the manager should say we as a team will work together to ensure that we will receive, we will achieve maximum efficiency though, so that we can stand as number one team in the organization. So what is it? It brings in cooperation, the word cooperation in all his conversation. So please underline the word, write it down. We, I is replaced by the word we. Let me correct this. I is replaced by the word called we in all his conversations. So what is happening? The employees will feel happy to work in the particular organization and the manager will also treat the employees well and employees will feel very happy that the manager is just in addressing them as we as a team and not being selfish. Yes, so please learn Esprit de Corp means spirit of cooperation. Moving on to the next point, scalar principle. This is one of the most important point. Why am I stressing so much in telling one of the most important point? Reason because it will even be asked for a one marker and a two marker. There are two important questions that will come from this point called scalar principle. They will ask you what is the meaning of the word scalar principle. And the second question is what is the meaning of GAND plan? Please make a note. They'll ask you what's the meaning of scalar principle and they'll ask you what's the meaning of gang plank. So that is what I'm going to teach you with a small diagram here. I hope you can see the diagram properly. You already know the levels of management that you have studied in your first chapter. Levels of management refers to what? The top level management, the middle level management and the lower level management. What have I told you? As per the rules and regulations of the organization, first it is the associates or the uh, senior associates, subject matters who will come in the lower level. Then it is the team leader, the managers who will come in the middle level. Then in the top level, you have the CEOs, the board of directors, which, uh, the managing director, all these people will come in the top level management. So if you have a problem in the organization, you being an employee, first you will go to whom? You will tell your uh, subject matter expert or you will tell your team leader. Team leader, manager, you will inform him. See, this is the problem that is happening. So what are you doing? You are following the formal lines of communication. Okay. So what is scalar chain? Formal lines of communication from the lowest to the highest or from the highest to the lowest is being followed or carried out. 
that is what is called as kela chain that means what when you have a problem that problem let's say you are an employee at the lower level you are directly going to the middle level that is your team leader and your manager you are addressing the problem to your team leader manager telling that this is the problem tell me what i'm supposed to do that team leader manager they will ask the top level management what decision has to be taken so they are following step by step procedure formal lines of authority is being followed this formal lines of authority which is followed is what is called as scale up chain did you understand it will come as a definite two marker or a one marker please mark it very important and make note of it now the second question is what is gang plank in case of emergency situation and again repeat in case of emergency situation these words and terminologies are very important please mark it or write it down in case of emergency situation the formal lines of authority is broken again i'll repeat in case of emergency situation the formal lines of authority are broken okay that is when it is called as gang plank okay now what is the diagram i want to show you now if you actually see there is a triangle top level management middle level management and lower level management in this top level management middle level so let me draw it here for you if you cannot see let me write top level middle level lower level now lower level has a problem informing to the middle level middle level is asking the consent of the top level this is what is called as scalar chain i'm writing it as sc so what is the meaning formal lines of authority from the highest to the lowest or from the lowest to the highest rank is what is called as scalar chain now what is the meaning of gang plank in case of emergency situation violating the formal lines of authority is what is called as gang plank so i'll give you an example here let's say you are working in the organization all of a sudden there is a fire outbreak in the organization now let's say in that situation your team leader is not around okay the direct person above you is your team leader or a subject matter expert there and your manager now let's say your team leader is not there will you actually wait and call your team leader when you can see your top level manager surrounded or somewhere there definitely what you will do you will run up to your top level manager and say there is a fire outbreak that's happened here in our team or in our department what are we supposed to do have uh, do should we have to evacuate from here so what is it it is an emergency situation where you are taking a decision by informing the next level of management you are not just sitting just like that so what is it violating the formal lines in case of any emergency situation so from the lowest directly you are jumping to the top level so this is called as gang plank understood words that you need to remember or write down violating in case of emergency situation is what is called as gang plank that will come for a definite one marker so the next point stability of personnel please remember wherever the word personnel comes i'll spell it out for you p e r s o n n e l personnel refers to employees or employee please remember employee it is it refers that is personnel p e r s o n n e l refers to employee so they are saying stability what is the meaning of the word stability stability refers to stable again i repeat stability refers to stable who should be stable here the employees should be stable in an organization now tell me why is henry fuel telling that employees should be stable in an organization only if employees are stable in the organization the organization will prosper and the organization will do really well otherwise the organization will always keep losing employees and the turnover of the organization will be really low now let me tell you what it refers to now there is a word called as employee turnover please check it if it's there make a note of it employee turnover refers to employees leaving the organization 
the employee leaving the organization that is leaving means the employee's turnover ratio should always be less so what happens if you joined an organization like let's say you are joined an organization called as goldman sachs now let's say you cannot bear the pressure of this particular organization so you leave within one month or you leave within two months now tell me will the organization just sit like that no there is a team called as the human resource or the hr team what they will check is every employee leaving the organization what is the reason the employee is not staying with the organization for a long period of time they will collect a lot of feedbacks and find out what is the real problem so what is that every organization should ensure that the employee turnover ratio is less the employee should feel happy working for the organization they only if the employees are happy working in the organization for a long period of time the organization will prosper and the employees will also feel very happy staying and working and doing any kind of job to achieve the organizational goals so what is stability of personnel the employee turnover ratio turnover ratio refers to leaving the organization employees leaving the organization that ratio percentage should be very less so should be reduced to maintain organizational efficiency just like what i explained employee should be given reasonable time this refers to any new employee entering the organization what are they saying any new employee entering the organization first thing the employee is put into training trained either on the job training or off the job training and should be given a probatory period that is enough amount of time probably 6 months one year to prove the employee's efficiency why because he is a new employee and it is a very new environment where he has to do a lot of learning and he has to be given sufficient amount of time to prove himself if he is not given sufficient amount of time you cannot just lay throw back the employee you have to ensure that you are giving just a little about amount of time so that the employee can prove his himself in performance so employee should be given enough reasonable time to prove their performance understood so moving on to the next point the last point in our sq okay subordination to general interest to sorry gen subordination of individual interest to general interest now please remember individual interest refers to employees interest or goals again i repeat individual interest refers to employees interest or goals general interest refers to organizational goals okay again i repeat subordination to individual interest refers to employees interest okay or goals to general interest general interest refers to organizational interest so what are they saying an individual an employee individual refers to again employee an employee joining the organization should ensure that he forgets all his goals that is his own personal goals we are not talking about organizational goals we are talking about personal goals now what is the importance of why are they, why is henry fiol telling that telling us that the main reason is let's take an example now i am an employee my personal goal is let's say i want to buy a bike i want to buy a car i want to build a house now these are my personal goals now just because i'm thinking of my personal goals and i'm working towards my personal goals i will sh i should not stop achieving my organizational goals just because i'm building a house i cannot just take holidays or just apply for leaves in a, in my organization and just sit back at home and start constructing my house it is unethical so what are they saying if you are coming to work first you should concentrate on achieving your organizational goals do really well at your job achieve your targets ensure that you are achieving your organizational goals whatever is set for you by the management when you are achieving your management or organizational goals directly or indirectly you end up achieving your individual goals or your personal goals 
Again, I'll give you an example. Let's say we take an example of Ravi. Ravi is working as an individual. His individual goals are he wants to construct a house, he wants to buy a car. All these are his own personal goals. Now, let's say in his organization, every day is supposed to complete 100 emails and take a lot of calls. Now, what is Ravi doing? He persistently works really well and does really well in his organization and stands number one in, in, the, in the first position. So he gets a lot of bonus. He gets a lot of performance appraisal. He is moving up the ladder towards promotion. His salary has increased. His roles, his responsibility, everything, his status is also increased. Now tell me when Ravi's salary is increased because of promotion, when Ravi is getting a lot of bonus, Ravi can make use of all this money to ensure that he can help to construct a house, he can buy a car, he can buy whatever he wants to settle his life. So indirectly or directly, when an individual is able to achieve the organizational goals, indirectly, directly, the employee is achieving his own personal individual goals. So please understand the knack of explanation is there in all the points. You just have to learn the important terminologies. When you learn the important terminologies, automatically your explanation is crystal clear. So let's just read about this. Subordination of individual interest to general interest. That means employee's interest, we or employee should always concentrate on achieving organizational goals. Indirectly, directly, employee is achieving his own personal goals. Every individual should show interest in achieving the organizational goals like I've explained. Individual interest should not disturb the organizational interest. Ravi just cannot take two, three days of leave to just construct this house or for some other bank issues. It's affecting the organizational goals, which is wrong. Organizational goals are more important than individual goals. And organization, once organizational goals are achieved, individual goals will be automatically achieved. Now we come to nine points of explanation here. So again, we'll do a revision before we can go to the other points, okay? Now the first one is division of work. Work should be divided. Any work can be divided into small job. Every job is required a specialist uh, who has to perform the job. If you do that, the quality and the quantity of production will improve. Discipline refers to one word called obedience. The employee should be obedient in following all the rules and regulations that are set by the organization. He should always adhere to what his management is telling him and maintain good relationship with his team members. This will improve the quality and the quantity of production. Next one, unity of command. One individual should only have one boss. If one individual has two bosses, it leads to a lot of confusion, escapism of work and the quality of the production will also reduce. Unity of direction. Each group, every team should be led only by one manager. If there is two managers, it leads to unhealthy competition, wastage of resources. And if there is only one boss or one boss for every individual team, it leads to a lot of coordination. Then uni equity. Equity refers to equal. That means what? The manager should ensure that he is treating all his employees equal. He cannot discriminate them with the basis of caste, creed, religion or sex. Then the next point is esprit de corps, meaning spirit of cooperation. What is it? In all the conversation of the management and the manager, I should be replaced by we. We as a team will work together to ensure that the work is getting completed. So what is it? The employees will feel motivated and the team spirit will build among all the employees. Next one, scalar chain. Two important words I had told you, two important questions. They'll ask you the meaning of scalar chain and the meaning of gang plan. What is scalar chain? Scalar chain is formal lines of authority from highest to lowest or lowest to highest that should be followed in any given organization, which is called a scalar chain. But violating these formal lines of authority in case of emergency situation is called as gang plan. Diagram is also there. Next one, stability of personnel. Personnel refers to the word called employees. Stability means stable. Employees should be stable and work in the organization for a very long period of time. That means it refers to the word called 
employee turnover ratio should always be less. If employee turnover ratio is high, that means employee leaving the organization is high, then the organization will always need to do efficiency and employers will be very dissatisfied. So, and you should give enough time for the employee to prove himself. That is, if for a new employee who is joining in, you should give a probatory period of one year to six months to prove himself. Next one, subordination of individual interest to the general interest. Individual interest refers to employee's goals, what he has set for himself. Example, I want to buy a house, I want to buy a car, I want to buy a bike. That's my own individual interest. But I cannot affect that. I cannot make that affect my organization and goals. Just because I want to construct a house, I cannot take a three-day leave and sit in the house or go around searching how I can build a house. I should ensure that my individual goals are separate from my organizational goals. So what is Henry Fuel saying? Automatically when you work for the organizational goals, automatically that is directly or indirectly your individual goals are getting fulfilled. Okay, now let's move on to the next point. Okay, coming down to the 10th point of principles of management provided by Henry Fuel. Order. What is Henry Fayol telling us about order? Why is order so important? Henry Fayol says that people and material. People here refers to employees, human resources, and material refers to things. Example, raw materials, technology, or resources, which I've already taught you. So, people and material must be kept at suitable places. You may be wondering how can we keep people at suitable places. We cannot keep people at suitable places. But in an organization, every employee has a designated place where he or she is supposed to sit. Example, team A, a team of 10 or 15 members are supposed to sit in the east wing. Team B is supposed to sit in the south wing. So every employee, each and every team employee has a designated place where they are supposed to be seated. What is the importance of they sitting in a place or things and materials and people should be in proper designated places? The main reason is so that, let's talk about the word called material. Material refers to things, let's say papers, let's say your files, let's say Whatever uh, raw materials or technology or whatever things have to be kept, they have to be kept in suitable places. Now let me give you an example. Let's say you are working in a team and you are supposed to sit, let's say, in the south wing. Now when you are sitting in the south wing, you are required to sit along with your team members. And your manager will also be sitting at a particular place which is assigned to him along with his team members. Now, in case a man, your manager wants to come and speak to you, he would come to your place and he would speak to you. Now, let's imagine every day you keep changing your place. You are seated at different places. Your team gets scattered. Your manager is finding the difficulty to find where exactly you are seated. There is no connectivity within the team. So, that's the reason Henry Fayol is saying order is very important. Human people or employees should fit in their particular respective places. Coming down to materials, material refers to things, let's say uh, your papers, your files, your property which you are using in the particular organization or let's say the printer, where exactly the printer is placed in an organization in your particular department, it is very important where it is placed. So what is he saying? All the things should be kept in their particular place so that the employees will not struggle to find out where exactly the things are. Example, if a printout should be taken, you should very well know where the printer is. If you want to take a Xerox, you should know where the Xerox machine is. Every day, if the printer and the Xerox machine is kept in different places scattered, it will be difficult for you, the employee to find out. So what is he saying? People and material must be kept in suitable places. And this will avoid the time. So example, let's say your manager is asking you, Ravi, where is the file that I asked you to keep safe? Now let's say all your files are jumbled in your desk or in your drawer and you're literally searching where the important file is. Is your things kept at suitable place? No. So what are they saying? You need to keep your things in order. 
and you need to keep your place really neat so that when asked you will take the file and give it to your manager so this avoids time as well next one there should be a place for everything and everything should be kept in its place what will happen this will reduce the productivity and efficiency you know that productivity should always be increased and efficiency should always be at the maximum so if you are not following order that is people and material is not kept in suitable places and everything should be kept in place if you are not following this principle what happens is there is a reduce in the productivity decrease in productivity and it leads to reduction in efficiency of employees coming down to the next point initiative now who is should take initiative see the word employees should take initiative now what is this initiative now let me give you an example your shift timing is 7 am to 4 pm in the morning now let's say your manager logs in at 11 am in the morning now tell me is there anyone there in your team to monitor you i don't think so anybody is there to monitor you because your team leader is also logging in after 11 am so along with your team members you should be self motivated and you should take the initiative to do your work all by yourself it's up to you whether you want to waste your time from 7 to 11 and then take the self realization telling oh my manager is coming now let's start working or whether you're going to start working from 7 am without even wasting much time so what is henry fayol trying to say every individual employee should be self motivated from within to take initiative to complete his job there is no need for a manager or a team leader to continuously monitor and keep telling the employee what's his rights and what is his duties that he has to do towards achieving the organizational goals so what is told employee should be given some freedom so what is the freedom that's given in the example your manager is logging at 11 am and your team leader is logging away from 11 am so you are given the freedom to be all by yourself from 7 am it's the decision you take whether you want to do your job or whether you want to do it after 11 am so what is it it's your self realization they are giving you full freedom for you to decide how you have to do your job but at the end of the day the organizational goals is very important for it to be achieved now employees should be given some freedom to achieve their goals organizational interests organizational interests refers to organizational goals should be very important over individual interests individual interests again refers to employees personal goals i have told you previously there is something called as individual interest and organizational interest the minute you fulfill your organizational goals automatically directly or indirectly your individual interest gets fulfilled okay so coming down to the next point steps taken by employees to self mortal motivation is called initiative so it all depends how motivated are you to do your job the steps that you take all by yourself to motivate yourself is what is called as initiative are you underlining the words you're writing down the explanation somewhere only then is going to be very easy for you to understand and study 12th point remuneration of employees please remember or write down the meaning of the word remuneration remuneration refers to salary okay all of us every month we do work and for the amount of work that we do the organization is paying us salary okay so remuneration is nothing but salary so what are they saying every employee should be paid just an equal amount of salary this will ensure good atmosphere that what is the meaning of good atmosphere if you are paying like example let's say i'm working for 9 hours a day for my 9 hours a day let's say it's just an example uh, my salary is just lay, let's say 10000 rupees for the 9 hours of job what i'm doing now let's say my job demands me to do 2 hours extra for the 2 hours extra i need to be paid extra money why because i am making i'm 
putting that extra effort in doing more work. So what are they saying? Only if I'm going to get paid extra, I'm going to have good relationship that I will share with my team leader, my managers, as well as my other team members. Now let's say the second uh, example. An employee who's working for 15 hours, okay? Nine hours of shift, but he's working for 15 hours. He doesn't get paid even one rupee extra. Do you think the employee will be happy to work even another extra or an extra Saturday or a Sunday for the organization? No. Why? Because the organization is not recognizing what efforts he is putting to do the job. Understood? So what does good atmosphere effort, good atmosphere refers to work, good working condition between the management and the employees. So how do you ensure good working condition? Ensuring that the management pays correct amount of salary or wages to the employees or to the workers. So the next one, there should also be incentives. Incentives refers to the word called bonus. Please write it down. Every organization, MNC companies, uh, mostly pay bonuses once in six months, ch checking the performance of the employee. Every month performance will be checked. Depending on every month performance, they'll calculate the standard deviation formula to check what is the performance of the employee over the past six months and then they will check the uh, one year performance of the employees. So what is happening every six months the employee is entitled to get bonus apart from their salary. Okay, so next one is uh, the next point. The 13th point is centralization and decentralization. This is a very important topic like your scalar chain. This topic will again come for a two marker, separate two marker again. And the, they'll ask you the difference between centralization and decentralization. Just to make things very simple for you, above centralization in red pen I have written as it's followed in large organization. And decentralization is followed in small organization. So that itself is easy for you to understand. When we talk about centralization, we are talking about a very big organization. Let's talk about, like example, an MNC company, a manufacturing sector. Now, when we are talking about decentralization, we are talking about, let's say, a private sector. Because the organization is a small organization. So, when I'm talking about centralization, your mind should think about a large organization. Let's talk about, example is MNC company. Like, let's, let's say IBM or Accenture or Wipro, any of those companies. Now, what is the meaning of centralization? Concentration of power. That means the power is in the hands of one or in the hands of few. Okay, what is it? The concentration of power is in the hands of one or in the hands of few. Now, let's talk about the triangular diagram of top level management, middle level management and uh, lower level management. If you see, larger the organization, larger the amount of levels will also go. But definitely, there will be around one, uh, 20 CEOs or 20, depending on the size of the organization. So when we are talking about the size of the organization, it is large. But the power, the decision making capacity does not lie with the middle level management. It lies only with the top level management. So that is the reason the concentration of power is in the hands of few or in the hands of one. Okay, that's why you have one CEO, one board, like 10 to 15 board of directors. So I'm just giving you an example, but again, it depends depending on MNCs. The number of levels will be uh, high, but again, when it comes to taking decisions, it will, the power will be concentrated in the hands of one or in the hands of few. Now, let's talk about the second point. It is found in large organization like I've already written it in the red pen there. Now, the coming down to decentralization, talk about a private sector where the maximum number of employees are 200. So, concentration of power is in the hands of many. So, what happens? You have production department, you have, uh, let's say, a finance department, all other sectors like garments, skin care, what not you have. So, what happens? The decision-making capacity is in the hands of many. Any person there can decide what to do. Why? Because they are doing the job on a continuous basis and it is not the job that they, that is going to change every single day. If you are manufacturing a shirt, the shirt has been manufactured throughout the years together. 
probably the color of the shirt may change but the human is actually in the same output so what happens anyone can take the decision there but when you talk about mnc company every day the problem that is tackled is different so at the concentration of power there will only be few people who can take the decision making power like probably your top level management so when when it comes to decentralization the concentration of power is in the hands of many why because it's a small organization and everybody knows in and out of what is happening in the organization so the second point is it is found in small organization which i've already written it in the red pen now what is henry fiol saying henry fiol doesn't agree to centralization neither does he agree to decentralization what he says is both should strike a balance between each other that means large organization small organization whatever organization it is they should follow to ensure that organization receives maximum benefits to achieve their goals organizational goals should be achieved so whatever type of let, let it be a, a hands of sorry power in the hands of few or power in the hands of many whatever you are following he is not worried about it but at the end of the day he is saying we have to concentrate on achieving the organizational goals so please mark this very important for a two marker which will definitely come in your board papers then the last point is authority and responsibility now please mark this very important for a two marker this also can last you as a difference so what is authority authority refers to right to give orders please learn these as i have uh, underlined the important terminologies you only learn this it's more than enough to make your explanation or write your explanation so who has the right to give orders the top level management your managers the board of directors the ceo has the right to give orders to tell you who should be the next team leader or who should be the next subject matter expert who should be promoted as the next manager so they have the authority in their hand so what is it and who are whatever authority they possess the others should obey to whatever they are telling so what is authority you have the right in your hands you have the right to give orders to people like think about your school or college principal or let's say your organization manager does he have the right to correct you and tell you what you're doing is wrong yes why because he has the authority which is given to him by the top level management and you very well will obey to whatever he is saying and you will agree to whatever he is saying because you feel that he has all the power and authority what is being given to him yes so what is the meaning of responsibility responsibility refers to the word called accountability okay these are the important words responsibility only deals with one word called accountability now what is henry fiol saying henry fiol is saying that when authority is given to a person automatically responsibility comes in within a person like let's say ravi is a manager of a company now how did ravi become a manager of a company because the top level management felt that he is very capable and they have given the authority to him to become a manager so he possesses the manager now only if authority is there it is not very important he has to take self initiative and he has to take responsibility of ensuring that his team is one and ensuring that his team is completing their job so what is responsibility responsibility is nothing but accountability he is feeling accountable telling that yes my team has completed the job no i feel accountable because i have not asked them to do this job they have not done it because i have not asked them to do it or probably they failed to do it i apologize so what is responsibility it's accountability which results in authority so any person who has authority is automatically responsible and accountable to do the particular job so what is henry fiol telling any person is given authority so any person who is given authority to be a manager or a team leader any other leader automatically he should feel responsible and he should have sufficient authority sufficient authority and there should be a balance between the two just like how i was telling you centralization decentralization both should strike a balance like that authority and responsibility both should strike a balance why 
only if authority is there you will feel responsible and accountable to do your job and perform really well okay so this we come down to the conclusion of the very important eight marker that is 14 principles of uh, Henry Fiore that's provided by principles of management provided by Henry Fiore Please learn it because the, the reason why I'm asking you to learn it is it's a definite eight marker and it's a practical oriented question in your section E. So please learn it and it's very important. Even if it doesn't come for an eight marker, it will come as a practical oriented question. Even if it doesn't come as a practical oriented question, you will have a lot of difference or meanings that's been asked from this particular topic. So any doubts you have, leave. Just leave me a message in your comment section or probably you can send me a message. I will resolve your doubt.